I am. Would you like to tell me what happened at school today? Uh, I am not sure what you were talking about, Dad. Well, your principal called and told me you were kicked out of class today. Yes, but it wasn't my fault, Dad. My genetics teacher was mad because she was boring me with this talk of Drosophila melanogaster. Oh, the good old fruit fly. I know, Dad. We weren't talking about fruit flies. She was going on and on about this Droso, whatever it is called. It is the same thing. That just happens to be the scientific name for it. You know your pops is very familiar with the fruit fly and its inheritance patterns. Yeah, well it just so happens to be disgusting and boring so when I told my teacher, she kicked me out of class. Like it was my fault. Well now, you know I raise you better than that. And you also know there has to be consequences for this matter. I know, and you can sew with my cell phone and I will take B in grounded as well. As long as I don't have to hear about these dumb fruit flies, I do not mind. I actually had a better lesson in mind for you. What do you mean? Well, Lizzie, I'm gonna tell you a story about fruit flies and an experiment myself and my lab pals took on back when I was in university. So sit tight. Ugh, Dad, can't you just take away my cell phone and ground me? Nope. Too easy in this way you can learn a lesson and I want you to tell your teacher you are sorry and what we talked about, so take notes and listen up. Fine. So one day, myself and a few of my lab buddies had the opportunity to work with none other than the Drosophila melanogaster, also known as the fruit fly, and our professor at the time wanted us to study the inheritance patterns between two fruit flies with the different phenotypes. What exactly is a phenotype? And who in their right mind would think it is a good idea to study flies? I'm glad you asked. A phenotype is a physical trait that you inherit from your parents, just how you have your mom's eyes and her hair, that's a phenotype. And the great Thomas Hunt Morgan, that's who. What a weirdo. What makes him so special, and what did he do with them? What makes him so special? He may not have been the first person to experiment with fruit flies, but he recognized groundbreaking information. He was a scientist, and really focused on the genetics of the flies, in his Fly Room wanted to observe mutations and heredity patterns and since fruit flies reproduce quickly, he figured why not. What exactly made his discovery so groundbreaking, and a fly room? It seems to me that he just liked to play with a bunch of flies. And that's where you are wrong. This man discovered the chromosomal theory of inheritance, which is that genes are located on chromosomes, and sometimes there can be more than one gene on a chromosome which means that they are linked genes. Also, he discovered that the fruit fly's eye color can be sex-linked, meaning the trait lies on the X chromosome and is inherited that way. Whoa, linked genes. Sex-linked. Dad, you're getting off track. Maybe if you spent less time getting kicked out of class you would know this, but we can save that story for another time. Anywho. So in my genetics class we took two types of fruit flies but eight in total, the four females who had the phenotype of red eyes, wings, her body was colored a light brown, which had several significant stripes on her body. We referred to this phenotype as wild type or WT. Then four males who we called A, on the other hand, who possessed red eyes, a dark bottom, no wings and the body was shorter than the females. Big deal, they looked different. But what did you guys do to them? Ah, uh, we made it them, of course. That is the only way we could find out what inheritance patterns were dominant and which were recessive, meaning which traits from these two flies would show phenotypically in their offspring. So if the trait did not show, it meant it was recessive. Exactly. You're catching on already. It means that the trait is masked because the dominant trait is overpowering the recessive. I mean... That makes sense, but how did you manage to make the flies mate? Right. So we had to set up a test tube with a scoop of water and one scoop of potato flakes because it is the food for the flies. We then had the flies and we used a gem called fly nap, which smelled terrible. I think I can still smell it. But anyway, we used the fly nap and it knocked the flies out. So basically you drugged the flies? Not exactly. We just laid them down for a nap, temporarily, in order to put them in the test tube, and that way they would be able to mate when they wake up. And how long did that take? 
Did you guys wait around and watch? No silly. We first observed the flies under a microscope and we took note of our phenotype. Then we napped the flies and went home. The process took about two weeks because the cycle goes egg, larva, pupa and then it becomes an adult fly. Interesting. So what happened after the two weeks? What do you think happened? The flies never woke up. No. The flies were gone. No the fly- The flies did not mate at all. No Lizzie, listen, the flies did not go missing. The flies woke up just fine, and they did mate. Why didn't you just say that dad? Geez. The point is, when we came back to class, two weeks later we had offspring, or what we would call F1 progeny. What does that even mean? F1 essentially means generation. The flies that we made it are called P1, or parental generation and the F1 stands for filial, meaning the first filial generation of offspring. Gotcha. Continue. So after two weeks, we had our progeny and a lot of it. We had to fly nap the flies again in order to observe the flies under the microscope. There were 85 wild type males, so they had the red eyes, dark bottoms, wings, short bodies and light stripes. Then we had 70 females in total, all of them possessing traits of red eyes, light bottoms, a long body also with dark stripes. Wait, so you ended up with 155 flies off of that mating, and there wasn't any flies that were wingless. How? Because of genetics math was. Having no wings was obviously a recessive trait, which is why all of the progeny had wings. Did any of the F1 progeny females possess traits that they did not have in the P generation? Not necessarily, they still had their light bottoms, red eyes, wings, and dark stripes. Same for the males, they still had their red eyes, dark bottoms, short bodies and lighter stripes. Well what was the point? It seems as though, the phenotype stayed the same aside from the wings. Flies should have wings anyway so. The point is, as geneticists we study and observe and to notice new phenotypes and to. Which you didn't. Sorry. To study new phenotypes we have to keep mating to the next generation. So the F2. Look at you. You might as well be a professional. You ever think about. Dad. Focus. Sorry. Sorry. Where was I again? The F2. Oh right. So we needed to mate the F1 progeny so they could create the F2, and only then we could take another look at the phenotypes. And how did you guys go about that? Well, first we had to clear out the vials of the any parent generation and then take out any pupa that hadn't matured, so there wouldn't be a mix-up between generations. So let me guess, you drugged the flies again with the fly stuff? Drugged? No. But yes, we used the fly nap to put the flies to a sleep again, and then, the waiting process. Geez. How long did this experiment take? Only four weeks, remember, it takes the flies about 7 to 14 days to meet and for the progeny to show. Okay, so after waiting another freaking two weeks, what did you see in the F2 progeny? I'm glad you asked, once the F1 mated we had 42 males in total. 38 of them possessing the wild type trait and the other 4 did not have wings. And then we had 40 females in total, 38 of them having the wild type phenotype and 2 of them did not have any wings. What's that look for? You just told me that no wings is recessive, so the heck. Watch your mouth young lady, I never said the wingless trait was gone for good. Now it is quite possible that the wingless trait was heterozygous. And before you ask me another question, you should know the answer to. Heterozygous is when you receive a dominant trait from one parent and a recessive from another. If your mother and I were both dominant for a trait it would make you homozygous. For an example comma you of your mother's brown eyes and you did not receive my blue eyes, your child can still have blue eyes. If you so happen to pass on the trait to them. Cool. You noticed a different phenotype in the F2. Did you guys go on to F3 to observe the next generation? Nope. We stopped there. And the flies? Dead. Gone. That is a terrible way to end the story. It is a part of life. 
but most importantly, we had the opportunity to see how traits are passed from generation to generation. Well thanks for the lesson dad, I'll be sure to share everything I learned to Miss QM. And. Tell her I'm sorry. And. And, uh, you're the best at in the world. I know, but I'm going to need your cell phone. And you can take this book. The violinist thumb. It's a good read, and you are grounded for two weeks. But Dad, you said this fruit fly story was a lesson. Ha! I did, didn't I? Well, think of this as an experiment. You disrespect your teacher, you get told a great story and then you get punished. Cause and effect. I'd say you got off easy. Plus, now you'll have time to read my favorite book. Hey, get in trouble again and I'll tell you about gene mapping and recombination. Good night Liz, read up.